Hello viewers and welcome to Celebrities Who Died Today. Today, on the 25th of January 2024, we're faced with the saddening truth of saying goodbye to 10 big stars. In this episode, we'll explore their impactful lives, reliving the moments that defined their legacies. From the screen to the stage, each of these luminaries has left an indelible mark. Stay with us until the end, where we've gathered exclusive insights and rare footage ensuring this tribute is both nostalgic and enlightening. Subscribe to Celebrities Who Died Today to join us in honoring these icons regularly. Your support is invaluable as we preserve the memories of those who've touched our lives. Now, let's embark on this journey together, remembering the remarkable individuals who bid us farewell today. Thank you for being here, and let's celebrate the lives of these stars who've left an enduring impact on our world. Number 1. Carl Andra Carl Andra was born in 1935 in Quincy, Massachusetts. His father was a naval engineer and his mother was an office manager. He showed an interest in art from an early age and studied at Phillips Academy, where he met his lifelong friend, the filmmaker Hollis Frampton. He also visited Stonehenge in England, which inspired him to pursue sculpture. In 1956, he moved to New York City and shared a studio with Frank Stella, another influential minimalist artist. He began to create wood sculptures that were influenced by Constantin Brancusi, but soon developed his own style of arranging simple geometric shapes on the floor. He used materials that he found or bought cheaply, such as bricks, tiles, steel plates, and magnesium squares. He did not alter or manipulate the materials, but let them speak for themselves. He called his works sculpture as place, meaning that they invited the viewer to walk around and experience them in space. Andra became famous in the 1960s and 1970s as part of the minimalist movement, along with artists like Donald Judd, Robert Morris, and Dan Flavin. He exhibited his work in prestigious galleries and museums, such as the Guggenheim, the Whitney, and the Tate. One of his most famous works, Equivalent Vui, also known as the Pile of Bricks, caused a public outcry when the Tate bought it in 1972. Many people did not consider it art and thought it was a waste of money. Andra's life took a tragic turn in 1985, when his third wife, Anna Mendita, a Cuban-American artist, fell to her death from their 34th floor apartment in New York. Andra was accused of pushing her out of the window after an argument, but he claimed that she either jumped or slipped. He was tried for second-degree murder, but was acquitted in 1988. The case sparked a debate about domestic violence and sexism in the art world, and many supporters of Mendieta protested at Andra's exhibitions. Andra continued to make art until his death in 2024, at the age of 88. He left behind a legacy of minimalist sculpture that challenged the conventional notions of art and aesthetics. He also left behind a mystery that remains unsolved. What really happened to Anna Mendita? Number 2. Frank Buck, Tennessee Politician Frank Buck was born on September 26, 1943, in Trousdale County, Tennessee, the son of a tobacco and cattle farmer. He graduated from Lebanon High School, Tennessee Technological University, and the University of Tennessee College of Law. He married his wife, Lida Ann Graves Buck, in 1962, and they had four daughters. Buck was elected to represent District 40 in the State House of Representatives in 1973, at the age of 29. He served for 36 years, until 2009 making him one of the longest-serving legislators in Tennessee history. He was a member of the Democratic Party and held various leadership positions, such as Vice Chair of the House Transportation Committee, Chair of the House Judiciary Committee, and Chair of the House Conservation and Environment Committee. Buck was known for his crusade for ethics reform in state government. He sponsored bills to ban gifts from lobbyists, require financial disclosures for lawmakers, and establish a strong ethics commission. He also exposed and ended a Whiskey for Votes racket in DeKalb County in the 1970s. 
He said he wanted to get serious about the public's trust and erase any doubt about outside influence. He was honored by the Tennessean as one of the Tennesseans of the Year in 2005 for his work on ethics. Buck was also proud of his Lemonade Stand Bill, which prevented the Tennessee Department of Health from requiring certificates of health for lemonade stands. He said he wanted to protect the rights of children to sell lemonade without government interference. Buck passed away on January 24, 2024, at the age of 80, after a brief illness. He was remembered as an honorable public servant, a devoted family man, and a friend to many. He left behind a legacy of integrity, transparency, and accountability in state politics. Number 3. Herbert Coward Herbert Coward was born on August 21, 1938, in Haywood County, North Carolina, the ninth child of Fred and Moody Parker Coward. His mother died at a young age, so he left school and began working a variety of itinerant labor jobs to help support the family, including at an orchard and operating heavy machinery. In the early 1960s, he got a job performing at an old West-themed amusement park near his home, where he played an outlaw character named Park Clanton. There, he met Burt Reynolds and Dan Blocker, who were also working as stuntmen at the park. They became friends and kept in touch over the years. In 1970, when Reynolds was cast as one of the lead roles in Deliverance, he remembered Coward and suggested him to the director, John Borman, for the role of the Toothless Man, one of the sadistic hillbillies who terrorized the canoists in the woods. Coward agreed to do the role, even though he couldn't read or write and stuttered. He improvised most of his dialogue, including the iconic line Squeal Like a Pig, which he said was inspired by his father's pig farm. Coward's performance was so convincing and terrifying that he scared the audiences and the critics alike. He received praise for his acting, but he did not pursue a career in Hollywood. He returned to his hometown and worked at a factory in Asheville. He also appeared in a few TV shows and movies, such as Moonshiners and Ghost Town, the movie. Coward was well known and loved by his local community for his friendly and humorous personality. He often went out with his pet squirrel and chihuahua, who were his loyal companions. He also had a girlfriend, Bertha Brooks, who he cared for deeply. Sadly, on January 24, 2024, Coward, Brooks, and their pets were killed in a car accident when their Nissan was struck by a pickup truck driven by a 16-year-old in Hayward County. The other driver was taken to a hospital. No charges have been filed. Herbert Coward was 85 years old when he passed away. He left behind a legacy of being a wonderful actor, a kind-hearted man, and a true cowboy. He will be missed by his family, friends, and fans. Rest in peace, Herbert Coward. You had a real pretty soul, didn't you? Number 4. Howard Golden Howard Golden was born on November 6, 1925, in Flatbush, Brooklyn. His father ran a delicatessen, but died when Howard was 16, leaving him to help support his family. Howard attended public schools in Brooklyn and Manhattan, and graduated from Stuyvesant High School. He then served as a Navy medic during World War II, and was part of the D-Day invasion of Normandy in 1944. After the war, he earned degrees from New York University and Brooklyn Law School, and became a lawyer and a politician. He joined the Roosevelt Democratic Club in Borough Park, and rose through the ranks of Brooklyn's political machine. He served as a city councilman from 1970 to 1976, and then as the borough president from 1977 to 2001. He was also the Brooklyn Democratic Party leader from 1984 to 1990 and wielded considerable influence and power in the city and state politics. He was known for his blunt and sarcastic style and his fierce loyalty to Brooklyn. He clashed and cooperated with many mayors and governors and met with presidents, royals, and celebrities. He was a proud Jewish American and a staunch supporter of Israel. 
He spearheaded many projects and initiatives to revitalize and improve Brooklyn, such as the Metro Tech Center, the Brooklyn Marriott Hotel, the Brooklyn Academy of Music, the Brooklyn Botanical Garden, the New York Aquarium, and Prospect Park. He also helped foster peace and harmony among the diverse communities and cultures of Brooklyn, such as the Crown Heights Coalition. He was widely respected and admired by his constituents and colleagues, and was honored with many awards and recognitions. He retired from public office in 2001 and briefly worked in the Brooklyn District Attorney's Office. He died on January 24, 2024, at the age of 98. He is survived by his wife of 65 years, Aileen, his two daughters, Michelle and Dana, and his two grandchildren, Jamie and Andrew. Howard Golden was a remarkable man who dedicated his life to serving and uplifting the borough he called home. He left behind a lasting legacy and a shining example of what it means to be a Brooklynite. Number 5. Alberto Tanasini. Tanasini was born in Ravenna, Italy, on August 6, 1945. He moved to Genoa with his mother when he was a child and entered the seminary there. He was ordained a priest on March 1, 1969, by Cardinal Giuseppe Siri. He then studied canon law at the Pontifical Lateran University in Rome and became a professor of canon law at the Seminary of Genoa. He also served as a parish priest, a chancellor of the archdiocese, a canon of the cathedral, and a vicar for family and health care. He was known for his pastoral care, his legal expertise, and his loyalty to the church. In 1996, Pope John Paul II appointed him as an auxiliary bishop of Genoa and the titular bishop of Sueli. He was consecrated by Archbishop Dionigi Tetamanzi, who later became a cardinal. As a bishop, he assisted the archbishop in the governance of the archdiocese and was responsible for various pastoral and administrative tasks. He was also the secretary of the Regional Bishops' Conference of Liguria. In 2002, he became the administrator of the archdiocese after the transfer of Cardinal Tetamanzi to Milan. He remained in this role until 2003, when Cardinal Tarsisio Batone was appointed as the new Archbishop of Genoa. In 2004, Pope John Paul E. transferred him to the Diocese of Chiavari, where he became the ordinary bishop. He led the diocese with zeal and dedication, promoting the new evangelization, the formation of the clergy and the laity, the care of the poor and the sick, and the dialogue with the civil society. He was also involved in the national and international affairs of the church, attending several synods of bishops and participating in various ecclesial organizations. He was a close collaborator of Pope Benedict XVI and Pope Francis, who appreciated his wisdom and fidelity. He retired from his office in 2021, after reaching the age limit of 75. He remained in the diocese as an emeritus bishop, continuing to offer his spiritual and pastoral support to the faithful and the clergy. He died on January 24, 2024, at the age of 78, in Lavagna, where he had been hospitalized for some time. He was mourned by the whole church, especially by the people of Genoa and Chiavari, who loved him as a father and a shepherd. He was buried in the cathedral of Chiavari, according to his wishes. Alberto Tanasini was a remarkable bishop who served the church with humility, generosity, and faithfulness. He left behind a rich legacy of teaching, charity, and holiness. He was a witness of the love of God and the joy of the gospel. He was a true friend of Jesus and a faithful son of Mary. May he rest in peace and intercede for us from heaven. Number 6. Jess Jane Jess Jane, a one-time Pooter's waitress and beauty pageant contestant who went on to star in the highest budget film series in pornographic film history, was found dead on Wednesday 24 January 2024 at a home in Oklahoma. The cause was believed to be a drug overdose, said Lieutenant Francisco Franco of the Moore Police Department in Moore, Oklahoma. 
He said that officers responded on Wednesday morning for a welfare check at a house where Jesse Jane and her boyfriend, Brett Hasenmull, had been staying. They were both found dead, Lieutenant Franco said, adding that the deaths remained under investigation. Jesse Jane, with her sweeping blonde hair, high arched eyebrows, and vivacious personality, was a defining star of early 2000s pornography as the internet transformed the industry. She then crossed over into some mainstream productions. She was a performer during an era where adult films were seen all over the world, and the promotions were massive. Brian Gross, a publicist for the porn industry, said in a text message to the New York Times. She made sure that she gave her all, not only in performing, but in promotion as well. Jessa Jane was born on July 16, 1980, as Cynthia Ann Howell in Fort Worth, Texas, according to public records. Her family settled in the Oklahoma City area when her parents worked at Tinker Air Force Base. According to a 2006 interview Jess Jane gave the Oklahoma Gazette. She graduated with honors from Moore High School in 1998. Jess Jane modeled for retailers like David's Bridal before landing a job for a commercial with Hooters, the restaurant chain, the Gazette wrote. Eventually, she worked her way up in the organization to regional training coordinator before deciding to become a full-time Hawaiian Tropic bikini model. By 2003, she had signed with Digital Playground, a porn studio, debuting in the porn film Beat the Devil. She also hosted two shows for the Playboy channel, Naughty Amateurs Home Videos and Night Calls, earning awards and acclaim from various industry publications. Jessa Jane was best known for work in the Pirate series of movies, in which she plays the first officer on a ragtag ship of sailors who go after a band of evil pirates. Digital Playground spent $1 million on the first film in 2005 and $8 million on the 2007 sequel, Pirates U. Stagnetti's Revenge, notable sums compared with the lower budget movie costs in the industry. As the industry transformed, Jess Jane transformed with it. The introduction of high-definition cameras prompted her to redo her breast implants because the cameras made them bulge oddly on screen. She shunned the shock value approach that pornography took in the mid-2000s and retired from the industry in 2007, then pivoted to creating her own line of sex toys. Jessie Jane, work was not limited to porn. She was among the rare porn stars who made the jump to mainstream Hollywood, including the 2004 reboot of Starsky and Hutch and the HBO series Entourage. Jess Jane told CNBC in 2009 that she saw performing as a job. You have to treat it like a job. I'm a mom. I have a family. You know, I bought a house. It's the way you pay your bills. Still, she said that she loved it and would go out of her way to meet her fans. Number 7. Kelly Malvo Kelly Malvo was born on November 5, 1976, in Belfour, California. He attended Long Beach Polytechnic High School, where he excelled in football and track. He then went on to play college football at the University of Arizona, where he was a four-year starter and a second-team All-Pac-10 selection as a sophomore. Malvo began his professional career in 1998, when he joined the Amsterdam Admirals of the World League of American Football. He then moved to the CFL, where he played for five different teams. The Saskatchewan Roughriders, the Calgary Stampeders, the Montreal Alouettes, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and the Edmonton Eskimos. He was a two-time CFL All-Star in 2004 and 2008, and amassed 463 defensive tackles, six sacks, and 17 interceptions in his career. He also played for the Orlando Rage of the XFL, the Sacramento Mountain Lions of the UFL, and spent some time with the San Francisco 49ers and the New England Patriots of the NFL. Malvo was known for his versatility, as he could play both defensive back and linebacker positions. He was also known for his memorable play in 2002, when he pulled out a sharpie from his sock 
to sign the ball after intercepting a pass from Milt Stigol, only to have the play overturned as a touchdown for the offense. Unfortunately, Kelly Malvo passed away on January 24, 2024, at the age of 47. His cause of death is still unknown. Malvo was more than just a football player. He was also a family man, a psychology graduate, and a mentor to young athletes. He is survived by his wife and three children, whom he loved dearly. He will be missed by his former teammates, coaches, fans, and friends, who remember him as a great competitor, a loyal friend, and a kind soul. Number 8. Selwyn Muru Selwyn Muru was born on 6 September 1937 in Tehapua, Northland, as Herawini Murupanga. He belonged to the Iwi of Te Opari and Ngati Kuri, and grew up learning the traditions and values of his people. He was also exposed to music and art from an early age, as his family would perform on various instruments, and he received some instruction from Katerina Matera at Northland College. Muru became a self-taught artist, working with different media such as painting, sculpture, carving, and set design. He was influenced by the Maori art development scheme initiated by Gordon Tovey in the 1950s, which unleashed a generation of influential artists such as Ralph Hota, Paramachet, and Fred Graham. Selwyn Muru and his peers changed the face of New Zealand art, expressing the pains and pride of the Maori people through their creative works. One of Muru's best-known works is Waharo, a seven-meter-high wooden gateway that stands in Ote Square in Auckland. The sculpture represents the Maori gods of the sun, sea, forest, elements, and the moon and stars, and aims to welcome and embrace visitors to the square. Muru was also a pioneer in Maori broadcasting, starting his career in 1966. He created and presented various radio and television programs in both English and Maori, covering current affairs, culture, history, and art. He was also a writer, poet, actor, and director, producing plays, films, and documentaries that showcased Maori stories and perspectives. Selwyn Muru was a respected and influential figure in the Maori community and received many awards and honors for his contributions. In 1990, he was awarded the Te Tohu Aroha Mo Te Arikinui Dame Te Atairangikahu Award for his achievements in Maori visual art, broadcasting, journalism, and waikarero. Selwyn Muru died peacefully surrounded by his wano on 24 January 2024. He is survived by his wife, children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. He is remembered as a groundbreaker, a visionary, and a leader for the Maori people. Number 9. Angel Maria de Pablos Angel Maria de Pablos was born on November 24, 1942, in Valladolid, a city in the heart of Castel and Leon. He grew up in a humble family of seven children, with a schoolteacher mother and a peasant farmer father. He discovered his passion for journalism at a young age, when he started writing for the local newspaper El Norte Castilla, at the age of 14. He later worked for El Mundo de Valladolid, where he became the head of sports and culture sections. He also collaborated with radio and television media, especially with TVE, the Spanish public broadcaster. He was known for his literary and cultural commentary of cycling events, such as the Tour de France and the Vuelta a España, where he introduced millions of viewers to the landscapes, history, and art of the regions crossed by the cyclists. He was also a prolific writer and poet, who published several books of poetry, essays, and novels. He received numerous awards and recognitions for his work, such as the Premio de Periodismo Francisco de Cossio, the highest distinction for journalists in Castel and Leon, which he won unanimously in 2020. He was also a member and president of the Association of Friends of the Theatre of Valladolid and a promoter of the culture and tourism of his region. Angel Maria de Pablos was a man of words, who dedicated his life to inform, educate, and entertain his audience with his eloquence, 
knowledge, and creativity. He was a respected and admired professional, who left a lasting mark on the Spanish journalism and literature. He was also a loving husband, father and grandfather, who enjoyed spending time with his family and friends. Sadly, Angel Maria de Pablos passed away on January 24, 2024, at the age of 81. He will be remembered as a master of communication, a defender of culture, and a lover of life. Number 10, Sergi Rosok. Sergi Rosok was born on April 25, 1985, in Slavutic, a city built for the workers of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. He started playing football at a young age and joined the Academy of Dynamo Kiev, one of the most successful clubs in Ukraine. He made his debut for the senior team in 2002, but he did not get many opportunities to play. He then moved to several other clubs, such as Tavria, Zakarpacha, Obalon, and Krybos, where he showed his skills as a midfielder. In 2012, he moved to Belarus, where he played for Minsk, Belshina, Nimin, Vitebsk, and Gomel. He won the Belarusian Cup with Minsk in 2013 and played in the Europa League. He also represented Ukraine at the youth level, playing in the 2004 European Under-19 Championship and the 2005 World Youth Championship. After retiring from professional football in 2018, he returned to Ukraine and played for some amateur teams in Kiev Oblast. However, he was not just a footballer. He was also a patriot and a hero. When Russia invaded Ukraine in 2014, he joined the Ukrainian army and fought for his homeland. He participated in many combat missions and was awarded several medals for his bravery. Sadly, Sergei Rosak was killed on January 24, 2024, during a clash with Russian forces near the border. He was 38 years old. He left behind his wife, two children, and many friends and fans who admired him. He was buried with military honors in his hometown of Slavutik. Sergei Rosak was a man who loved football and his country. He was a talented player, a loyal teammate, and a courageous soldier. He sacrificed his life for the freedom and independence of Ukraine. He will always be remembered as a legend and a hero. Rest in peace, Sergei Rosak. As we conclude our tribute to the remarkable stars who departed on this day, we hope this journey has been both poignant and enriching. Remember to cherish the memories of these icons and celebrate the legacies they've left behind. If you found this episode meaningful, don't forget to hit the like button, share your thoughts in the comments below, and most importantly, subscribe to Celebrities Who Died Today for regular updates on our heartful tributes. We appreciate your continued support as we navigate through the stories of those who've made an everlasting impact on our hearts. Stay tuned for more heartfelt remembrances, and until next time, I'm your name, setting off on behalf of our entire team. Thank you for joining us on Celebrities Who Died Today. May these stars rest in eternal peace.